name is Jacob, and I work for Microsoft, but I work for the new Microsoft. <laughs> and currently I work on the new Azure portal, which is this, uh, the biggest single page web application written in TypeScript. It's also one of the biggest single page application in the world at all. It's almost 500 developers working on that. And we are using TypeScript. Uh, I have a blog, jj09.net. I encourage you to check it out and subscribe. You can also find there my Twitter handle, my GitHub, and my YouTube channel. Uh, so TDD, uh, how many of you are testing your code? Okay, like 80%, that's great. How many of you are using TDD? Okay, like half of you. Okay, cool, I, uh, I want to uh, do TDD to, uh, today because I want to t uh, show you some uh, testing tools and I think TDD is mature enough today because it was like pretty cool like four years ago when only the hipsters were doing this. Uh, now I, I think everybody is uh, able to do that. Uh, I also want to uh, do the quick recap. So, you know, in TDD you first write the test, then you write the production code. Because actually after you write the test, you need to run the test and make sure it's failing. And then when you write production code, your test should start passing. Once it's passing, you, you can or you have to refactor your code and you have the test to make sure that you won't break anything. Uh, I want to talk about TypeScript because uh, TypeScript is a tool and language that helps you to test your code in such a way that it generates uh, the free unit test for you, thanks to the typing. Because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, uh, which is ECMAScript 6 plus type system, which is optional. But the type system uh, allows you to detect uh, potential bugs or API changes or method uh, parameters changes. And you don't have anymore have to write a unit test for that. Like for example, foo.bar is not equal undefined, right? To check if a method is existing. You just need to compile a TypeScript code to JavaScript. And once you compile it to JavaScript, you can run it in all uh, browsers that people are using today. You can even compile it to ECMAScript. Six, uh, ECMAScript 3, which is in i6, I believe. Uh, how many people heard about TypeScript here? Okay, most of you. Great, so I don't have to do introduction. Uh, so I want to uh, show you some demos <coughs> with Node.js because you can uh, write Node.js apps with TypeScript. And I also want to uh, use AngularJS. Uh, because I think this is currently the most popular uh, front-end <laughs> framework. How many of you are using Angular at work? Okay, uh, how many of you are not using Angular? Oh wow, there are some people. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, there are three main JavaScript uh, testing frameworks, QUnit, Mocha, and Jasmine. Uh, I think QUnit was very popular around two or three years ago. Uh, we at Azure Portal, we are using QUnit because our project started three years ago. But today, uh, it seems like the Mocha or Jasmine would be better choice for testing frameworks. Mocha is very flexible because it allows you to bring your own assertion library, your own uh, mock, mocking framework. But Jasmine is like all in one. So uh, most of people are using Mocha to test Node.js and they tend to choose Jasmine for front end. So this is what I want to do today. I want to show you how to test your Node.js with Mocha and how to test the Angular front end with Jasmine. Um, I, will, I will also use a few JavaScript tools that uh, somebody cannot live without today, right? Because you know when, <laughs> when we are starting the new project, first we need to install like 10 NPM libraries then we need to uh, create 200 lines of gulp, uh, gulp file.js, then install three or five uh, Bower packages, and then we can write hello world and our app is running. Uh, so th that's the workflow today. Uh, I also wanna mention TSD. TSD is TypeScript Definition File Manager. TypeScript Definition Files are sort of like header files in C++. And the purpose of that is that uh, we have already existing JavaScript frameworks like jQuery or Angular, uh, but 
when you want to use it with TypeScript, TypeScript doesn't know anything about you know its its, its types. So for that, Anders Heilsberg come up with uh, TypeScript definition files, uh, and using the interfaces, you can describe what is in this uh, in this JavaScript frameworks, and then you can uh, have IntelliSense and you can have type checks for for using them. Uh, I also use uh, Karma to run the Jasmine tests, to run the tests in actual browser. Karma is a test runner that uh, will spin up your browsers and run your tests in there automatically. And if I'll have enough time, I'll also show you end-to-end -end testing with Protractor. Protractor is uh, created by AngularJS team. It's end-to-end -end testing framework uh, based on Selenium. So uh, let's write the code. Uh, so, as I mentioned, first I will, I will show how to test Node.js code with Mocha, then how to test Angular with Jasmine, and at the end, end-to-end uh, -end testing with Protractor, but probably the last one will be uh, left as an exercise for the viewer. So, <laughs> you guys will have to do that. Actually, I want to show you one, one, one more cool thing, because yesterday, uh, Somebody told me, you know, that if we go to GitHub slash Microsoft slash TypeScript, there is 8,000 commits. You know, this repo is around for three years because this is how long the TypeScript is there. And if you go to commits, you can see there's a lot of uh, pull requests. The pull request 5,000, that's pretty impressive. But if you scroll down here, if we go, 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 go here go here and here you can see that even Anders Halesberg the creator of TypeScript also creator of C sharp and creator of Turbo Pascal the person who I thought it's uh, only a manager who is doing a high-level design he's actually writing code here and if you you know click here and you can see all his contributions he's writing code like like a developer this I think this is pretty cool you know so here yeah, this is all code he, he had written. Uh, yeah, this is such an interesting thing. Okay, so I want to create a simple app uh, that will allow you to vote for three options. Uh, first option will be awesome, second will be okay, and the third will be bad. Uh, and I will start with tests. So I already created a structure for my project, so you won't have to watch me installing uh, 15 of my uh, NPM packages. So I have it in here. If I go to TDD with TS, open my Sublime. Hope you can see it. So uh, here are my uh, NPM packages. I'm, I'm using Mocha. I'm using Gulp to uh, compile my JavaScript files. I'm also using Gulp to run my tests automatically when I do change in some file. It will automatically compile my files and run my tests. And I'm also using Karma to run the Jasmine tests. So first I will create a test for my voting application. So I'll create a new file called voting test TS. And first, you know, in, in Mocha, uh, you need to have external assertion library. You can use default uh, node assert, uh, but I think the cool people are using Chai, so I'll use Chai, pretend to be cool. So I'll say require, oops, not request, require, here, whoop. Okay, Chai. And uh, in Mocha you have uh, the scribe function, and in the scribe function, you just say whatever my voting app. And here you provide the function in which you have your uh, test requirements. So for example, I can say it should be able to init votes. And here another function where I will have my uh, actual test. But you can also see that you know here, I, I get red squigglies uh, below the describe and below it. That's because TypeScript doesn't know anything about these functions. And this is where the TypeScript definition uh, files are coming in. And I already have them here in the typing directory. So for example, here is uh, the mocha definition file. And you know, it's just a set of interfaces and declarations. 
So I'll import it for my, uh, to my file. I will say reference path equals typings mocha, mocha VETS. And I'll do the same for chai. Say chai, chai. Okay, and now you see my red, red squigglies are gone. Say so valid code. So let's write the test. Uh, I like to structure my unit tests in three A's block. So it's arrange and act and assert phase. And in arrange, I'll, I'll say, I'll have some options. And my options will be like I mentioned, awesome, okay, and bad. And then in my act phase, I don't have any production code yet. Uh, so I, I imagine I will have some voting module. On this voting module, I will have some init function and I'll supply my options to this function. And then in a, to assert whether it, it worked, I'd like to say, vo uh, I'd like to say, sorry, I'd like to say uh, chai dot expect. You see how I'm getting uh, IntelliSense here? This is thanks to the uh, definition files and thanks to TypeScript as well because I am using the TypeScript plugin in Sublime Text. So here I say expect a voting dot get votes length to be equal three. So I'll have three options. I also don't have the get votes function. So you know in, uh, in JavaScript workflow, the first thing you do probably you would uh, write separate unit tests or check that the get votes function is existing check if the init function is existing. But in TypeScript, I'll just you know, create this module because I cannot compile it yet. So I'll create a new folder called controllers. Oops. Oh, come on. Yes. New file called voting.ts. And I'll just create empty functions in it. And here, uh, I'll have the parameter options, and I will say column string array. So this will uh, tell the user of this function that I'm expecting the array of strings in here. You cannot uh, supply anything else. And this function will return nothing, so I'll say void. And I'll leave it empty for now because I just want to compile this. I'll also say function get votes. And here actually, I don't know what I will return yet, so I can use any type, uh, which is dynamic type, which can be everything. This is like no type. And I will say that I want to return array of something. And I'll just return empty array for now. So I can have all the length property I am using here in my tests. And here I will import voting module. I'll say require dot dot controllers voting. Okay, and you see my rest squiggies are gone. So now I can go to my console and actually one more thing. Uh, so here I have a gulp file, it's my gulp configuration. So here I have a task to compile my TypeScript code and here I have a task to run the tests with Mocha. And here is a task to run my Karma tests. But actually for now, I won't need a to run karma, so I'll just uh, comment this out. And I'll run gulp watch. Okay, come on gulp. Can't be that slow. Yeah, okay, it's starting. Okay, so now I'll try to simulate some change. Let's say, say, Okay. Okay, what if I try to run Gulp? Oh, but okay, I'll have to remove Karma from there too. And that's fine. Okay, Gulp. Okay, so it kicks off. It's compiling my code. I should get some errors because I have other file. Uh, and, and here I'm getting the failed assertion. I expected to have uh, three elements, but I got only uh, zero elements, I have nothing because I'm returning empty array. So let's fix that. I'll go back to my voting file 
here I need to, you know, init my options somehow, but you know, I, I will also need uh, uh, sort of keep track of the number of votes for each option. So for that, I will create new model for this purpose. Create new models directory and new file called vote. Yes, and here I'll create a TypeScript or ECMAScript 6 class called vote with two properties, label, type string, and number of votes, type number. JavaScript has only one number type. And I'll create a constructor as well, which will take uh, the label of the vote as a parameter and will assign it to label, and then it will init votes with uh, zero because uh, at the beginning I will have zero votes, right? So I'll use this here. I'll say import vote require models vote. Oh, and here I'm getting red squigglies. That's because I didn't export uh, my class. I'll say export vote. And now you see, you see it goes away. So this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, Okay, so now I will need to create uh, some storage for that. So I'll create a votes and I'll say this will be array of uh, vote type. I won't init it yet. Uh, let me just say let. Let is also new ECMAScript 6 keyword that allows you to create variables on the uh, block scope in, in, instead of function scope as we have today. And here I'll say votes equals options dot map oh, new vote o. Oh. So I'm creating a new vote object out of every option I have. And here I will return my votes. So I'll click save. I'll go back to my book file. And my test is passing. So uh, I can edit my votes, but now I want to be able to vote for some option, right? So again, I'm starting with test. I'm creating another requirement saying it should be able to vote. And here I'll use the arrow function, which is another uh, ECMAScript 6 feature that allows you to uh, don't change the scope because uh, if you use this keyword in function, it will be scoped to the function, but if you use uh, this in here, it will be scoped to the parent, which is uh, what we usually want in uh, JavaScript. Uh, I will copy this because I would like to init and my votes in the same way, say range, and then in act, I want to say voting with vote and supply the uh, number of options. So for example, I want to vote for OK, and then I want to assert and expect, sorry, shy dot expect. And I am getting already red squigglies here because I don't have vote function. I'll expect that get votes, my first option, votes, to be equal one. And I can also assert for my other options. I will expect that they have uh, zero votes. I'll save this. And now I need to just uh, fix my vote function. So say export function vote, index type of number, will be empty here and I want to see my test failing okay error in plugin okay my test is failing uh, the count doesn't uh, increase so I'll fix that go back to my voting module I will say votes index votes plus plus click save I'll compile again and my second test uh, is passing so I have my backend working. I already added the Node.js server using Express, and I am uh, here. I am already using uh, this function I just created. Uh, I know it was <laughs> a little bit cheating, right? But sorry for that uh, time constraints. So here uh, on get request or get votes, uh, it will use my voting module, and on post request for voting for some option. It will call the vote function and it will send updated number of votes. And when I am running the server, I am uh, initiating the options uh, with my init function. So uh, 
I have my node part, so now I will create my front end with Angular. And here I already created public directory, because here in a node I am saying that, that my static directory is public. So here in public I have uh, index.html file. And here is just a simple uh, Angular view where I am uh, just printing my votes and I'm printing the vote count. And I can, when I click on a particular vote, it will send a request. But I need to create my Angular controller. So uh, the first thing I would do, I will create a new folder called app. And this is where my Angular app will live. It's a new file, app.ps. And here, uh, I'll declare the module voting, which will have a get module function that will allow me to uh, avoid type, typing this uh, string here and you know misspelling it because th this can happen. You know, if you just in Angular if you mistype uh, the name of your module, you'll just create a new module, and sometimes you have issues with uh, finding out that you make a mistake, right? Because uh, there is not a very good way to test it, right? I mean, if you have tests, that's good, but this is like another uh, free test that it prevents you from making mistakes. So I have my app here. And I will create a test directory called test and new file voting controller test ts and here I have already uh, my preparation code. Uh, I am using here Angular mocks because you know in order to test your Angular code, you need to use mocks a lot. You need to mock, for example. I want to mock HTTP backend because I don't want to make the real call to my backend. I want to test it independently. So I will fake my backend. And I also need to inject the, the scope. I need to create it by myself. And actually, when I create the first test, so here, should get votes. In this test, I am setting up my uh, fake HTTP backend. But if you get, uh, if you get the get request, and this, uh, to this uh, URL, please respond with uh, code 200 and this expected result, which I defined here. You can see it. So this is the same thing I, I will have on, on my backend. And then uh, just instantiate my controller and inject the scope. And during the controller instantiation, this call should happen. Uh, HTTP backend flows is just making all the magic on the Angular mocks side. And at the end, expect that I will have uh, this array of votes on my scope, so I can use it in my view. Uh, so I will save this, and I also create a controller, controller.ts, and here I will just uh, really quick create my ng controller. So, uh, I don't have time to type all of it. So my controller is a TypeScript class, which have constructor, where I am calling my getVotes function. Uh, the function I, is empty. It, it will compile, but it will fail now because I don't have an implementation. And here I am uh, using my getModule function to instantiate the controller. And I am injecting the scope and HTTP service to make the HTTP calls. So I'll save this. And in my group file, I will, uh, redo my changes because now I need karma to run my tests. Also go to the command line and rerun my uh, Google script. And now it will first run my server tests with Mocha. You see it passed and now it's running IE and Firefox to run my uh, Angular tests with Jasmine. And uh, actually here I have also the karma config file uh, I'm saying that I'm using Jasmine uh, testing framework. I also need to uh, specify the list of files that Karma will need to be aware of in order to run my tests. And I also need to uh, tell Karma what browsers I'm using. Uh, I'm using uh, Internet Explorer because I work for Microsoft. Uh, I'm using Firefox uh, because uh, Chris, uh, the current Microsoft employee, it was working for Mozilla, so I'm doing this for him. And I'm using PhantomJS which is a console browser, which doesn't actually need to run in the browser, it just works on the console. But you know, usually you, will, you want to test in the real browser. So uh, let's see, I have one 
failing test, which was expected. So let's fix that. I'll go to voting controller and in my get votes function, I'll use my HTTP service that I injected. And you see what is cool? Because here I am using the interface that I'm, I'm saying that, oh, there is this ng.ihttp service. And th thanks to that, when I do dot here, I get IntelliSense of, of all the functions I have available. So for example, I want to use get function here and I want to call API, sorry, slash API get votes. And on the successful response, I'll just set whatever I get on my scope dot votes data. And here's actually a problem because you know, I strongly typed my scope to NGI I scope and the votes doesn't exist there. So there are two ways to work around this. One is to just cheat TypeScript compiler using this method. So I'll just do it for now. And I'll just wanna see if my test is uh, passing now. Okay, so now my test is passing. So this is cool. Another way to do that, because you know now I have my test, so now I can refactor my code. And I wanna say, you know, I really want to use the dot notation. So what you can do, you can create a new interface called, for example, voting scope, which extends the NGI scope. And here I'll have property votes, type of any because this will return a JSON, so I cannot really uh, infer the type from there. And now I will here use the voting scope instead of I scope. And now this won't be read. And you know, if I run my tests, I see that they are still passing, so I am, I am fine. So let me add one more test here to actually be able to vote. Okay, vote controller two. So here I'm doing the same thing I did in the first test. I am faking my HTTP back, backend to expect get, get votes, and then instantiate the controller, but this is only my preparation because what I really want to do is uh, if you get the post call to vote URL with option one, then respond with 200 and expected result this time should have uh, one vote. And after this call, uh, expect that the votes on scope will be updated with this updated array uh, I am having here. Okay, so I'll save this and I'll watch my test failing because you know, uh, it's really useful to make sure that this is uh, failing because you know sometimes we are writing code then we are adding the test and then you know you are commenting out your code so you are or removing it and test is still passing right how many of you did that okay only three brave people admit that but yeah this is this is just what you know what happened that you think you are testing it but you are not really so you know even if i'm not doing tdd sometimes when i am you know writing the code and writing the test uh, I'm seeing it passing cool, but then I'm you know, just removing my functionality and I'm making sure that my test is failing you know, to make sure that my test makes sense. Okay, so here this is failing and I'll go to voting controller and here in vote function, I'll say this HTTP post API vote and here I'll add the index number. I'm not supplying any data, so I'll say just null here. And on success, I'll actually need to do the same what I did in get votes. So I'll just grab this and I paste it here. Uh, copy paste, not good, but again, I want to see if uh, my test will pass first. Okay, so it looks like everything is fine, it's passing. And now I'll just uh, refactor it. I'll grab this function and create the private uh, on votes receive property, which will be this lambda. And I'll just, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's rerun it. Uh, sublime, one more time, vote, okay, uh, gulf. Vote to 
Think controller TS. Ah, I don't have my lambda. Okay, one more time. Copy. I'll call it private temp, right? Because this is the best name for everything. This temp and this temp here. Boom. Save it. And let's see if this will still pass. And this is still passing. So now I should be able to run my uh, app and it should just work. So I'll go here, I say localhost 3000. And here's my app, I have three options. I can vote, and it's updating, and you can actually see I'm not cheating. Uh, here in network, I'm actually doing the, the calls, post request, and I'm getting uh, updated votes. And uh, because Chris is here, who is evangelist for Edge, I'll show that it even works in Microsoft Edge. And you know what is cool feature about Microsoft Edge? That you know in Google, when sometimes I'm closing a Chrome with like 10 tabs open, and then you reopen it, like, you know, your machine is stuck because it tries to load all of them. Edge is that, doesn't do that. It just loads the one page, and you know, if I click on this tab, it started loading this tab when I click it, which, which just makes sense. It's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, let's see if uh, my app works, works here. Yeah, works here as well, and you know, I even have the uh, same uh, votes, not, votes count. So uh, because I have five more minutes, I can also add an end-to-end test with Protractor, and now I can you know, test my scenario working in real life. So I already have uh, my Protractor config file, so I will I'll need to create end-to-end -end test in my test UI folder. So let's do that. Test UI and new file called end-to-end -end test TS. And here I also cheat, I already have this test written. So I will say, hey, open the, my browser on localhost 3000, then find the first element on the list, uh, click it, and then expect that uh, this first element will have updated uh, vote count from, from zero to one. So I'll save this, and I'll actually need to recompile this with gold. I'll open one more console. So this is the tool that requires you to actually run four consoles to make it happen. So in second console, I need to say, oops, okay, my test is running. Uh, another test, cool, the one type. Okay, I'm here. So here I'll run uh, my server. In another console window, I'll run uh, web driver manager, because this will Protractor needs. I'll start it. In the fourth console window, I'll run actual test. I'll say Protractor and supply the config file. Actually, let's see. Okay, it's compiled. Everything is fine. And now I click enter. And this should run the Firefox, should click on the first element and then assert that the uh, vote can't update it. So you know, this, uh, okay, running, what was 3,000, and click, and one test is passing. So you know, this is also very useful uh, to have Selenium test because uh, many times, me and Azure Portal, when we had some bug, somebody, you know, discover, oh, we have a bug, but this was working. Oh, when it was it working? Oh, like, I'm sure three weeks ago, it was working. So, you know, any time from now, three weeks ago, it, uh, it was working. So you need to just check, you know, this three weeks. So we have around 40 developers in our team, and we have around 50 commits every day. So this is like around uh, 300 more, 500 commits. I need to went through to see who broke it, right? So then the Selenium tests are, are very, very useful because you know sometimes in, in case of this, I have people coming to me, hey, you know, I did this change and I don't know why I broke your test. And then I'm saying, well, I don't know neither, but let's see, right? And then we can have like sort of control that something which is you know used maybe one out of the million cases, right, will be not broken. So, so that was testing with uh, Node with Mocha, uh, testing Angular with Jasmine, and end-to-end -end testing with Protractor. 
uh, if you want to start with TypeScript, I recommend you the Learning TypeScript book by Remo Janssen. I reviewed this, this book. It, it's pretty cool because it shows you only, not only uh, TypeScript language, but also uh, how to set up your uh, environment, how to structure your project. It's also about the testing tools, even about the browser performance. So it's a pretty cool position. If you want to go uh, into this driven development or even testing it at all, uh, the Ken Beck book is pretty pretty good because uh, he's explaining that this driven development is more about the good design than about the code. Uh, and the unit testing by Roy Osherov is, I think, the best overview of uh, unit testing in general and the techniques you should use. And recently I read this book, Start uh, to Unit Test. Uh, how many of you have problem with convincing your bosses to test your code, that you need unit tests? One person, two, three, more, three person, four, five. So you know, Eric Dietrich is saying like, <laughs> you shouldn't ask them, you should just do it, right? Because you're not asking them, hey, <laughs> can, can I uh, search Stack Overflow for a half day, right? <laughs> Because this is what we are doing at work, right? You know how to do something, you go to Stack Overflow. It, it's called Stack Overflow Driven <laughs> Development. Uh, but that's, that's how we work today, right? So uh, please check out TypeScript, test your code, and write a good code, and thank you very much. <laughs>